Right, so we're here today, we come to Cudmore today and it's flipping freezing. It, it's, it seems like it's changed, the winter is definitely, definitely on the way. But what we come out to do, it's something a little bit different, we're going to focus a lot on feeding. I, mean, I want to come out today and I want to talk about feeding at the, the colder times of the year, when it's starting to go and I'll say we're, uh, what, first week in October? And it's definitely, it's, everything's really changed. I've been out coaching the last few weeks and everything's, you, you can't be as positive anymore. You've definitely got to um, find things down a little bit. So I want to talk about the, the versatility of feeding with a pole pot. I mean, it's something that people don't think about enough. They think it's just a case of filling your pole pot, shipping out there, putting your bait in. That there's so much more to it than that. And definitely, I, I want to touch on our new pots that we've just brought out. That there's something that I'm, I'm quite proud of. I mean, I've worked quite a bit with Sean to, to produce these pots. And I definitely believe that they're the most versatile ones out there, which is what I need for my fishing. I mean, I don't want to have a, a bag full of hundreds of different types of pots. Now I've got one pot that does lots of different things. And so that's what I want to go through today. I'm going to start a typical session. A little bit different, I'm going to catch some silver things today. I'm going to catch some skimmers and a bit of everything, just because they're more reliable to feed. Yeah, and I'm going to show the different ways that I can incorporate my pot into creating um, sort of a, a different response from the fish. I mean, that the ways you need to feed with your pots, whether you attract fish, keep them on the deck, bring them into your, you know what I mean, whatever. I'm going to go through quite a few things and show you what I do to catch a few more fish just using my little pots. Right, so I'm not going to go too much into... You know what I mean, kit and things like that. We're just having a nice day fishing for skimmers and F1s and a few carp and who knows what. I told me. So I've chose one line at 13 metres. So I've plumbed it up, I've got my bait on, I am ready to go, but I've not had a cast yet. So very similar to how I'd always start fishing, very hard pellets on my short line, things like that. It's no difference at this time of year. I mean, the last thing I want to do is put a big pot in and mess things up. I've talked about this a hundred times on videos in the, the benefits of feeding a minimal amount of bait to, to see what response you're getting. So if you feed too much, you can't take it out. There's too many options to the fish and if it's going to be a dodgy day which at this time of year this this october november time you tend to very often it's a slow start I mean, it's very rarely you go in and it's good straight away it's often a, a real slow often till dinner time maybe one o'clock and then things build up so the last thing i want to do is put a big volume of bait in that peg and, and knacker it for, for later in the session so it's about keeping things simple so the first thing i'm going to do is feed some micro pellets yeah and what i've got i've got my nice little normal pot on with a normal lid yeah, I like having a little normal lid, even though I'm just going to feed a ball. Yeah, I like a little normal lid that it'll just fit in. I know that'll still come out when I want it to. Yeah, it just helps keep it in. Yeah, simple as that. And regardless of how well I do my rollers, there's still a chance of that little ball wobbling out if I just have it in a, a straight-sided pot. You know I mean? It just helps me get it out there nice and quick. So by feeding a nice little ball, so I always like to put a ball in to begin with, um, it keeps things as accurately as possible. So that pot's going to allow me to put my little tiny ball really, really accurately and fish over it and say by fishing such an accurate area with such a small amount of bait, if there's any fish already present in my peg, they're sort of very easy to catch as long as the willets go on the bottom. And there's a few things we can change in a bit to see if they don't want to go on the bottom. But yeah, to start with, I just want to see what's available in my peg, how the fish are feeding. So I, I don't want to put uh, bait going through the water. If I have bait going through the water immediately, then what could happen if there's already fish close in the proximity where I want to fish, then there's a very good likelihood as soon as I feed, with micros especially, they sink so slow that the fish can easily intercept that bait through the water if I feed them loose. I mean, a micro pellet sinks, at, I wouldn't like to hazard the guess, probably five, six seconds a foot. It takes a long, long time, and we've got what? We've got five foot out there, so it's a hell of a long time for their micro pellets to reach to the bottom that if I'm only feeding 20, there's a good chance that none will end, um, end up going to the bottom if I feed them loose. So at least by starting off with a ball, I put it right down where I want it, and hopefully if there's fish in that area, I'll catch them a little bit quicker. But we're going to whiz out and have a little go. Like I say, hopefully I don't knock that ball out because that'll make me look a right spanner if I do. As long as that sun ain't too bad. So I've got me, me marker lined up on that far bank and I'm literally just going to tap my little ball in. Still, it's allowed me to get a nice solid lump right over the top of my float where I want it to be. Because that'll go down nice and quickly, so there's less chance of me getting liners, false indications, things like that, if there's fish already in, <laughs> if there's fish already in my peg. So that, that's my first cast out. That's not even a, a sneaky cast. That's literally my first one, and there's a lot of these in here. So that doesn't surprise me. But as you see, even happening that quick, not quite a fish I want, I want to catch a lot bigger fish than that. But by keeping things nice and making it go down to the bottom, your first bites are bites. Yeah, you don't get any false indications because you've not got bait going through the water. You've not got any fish up in the layers. 
you've just got fish on the bottom where you want your bait to be. And what I do, I carry on with that. I mean, there's no reason I'd change every cast. As long as it was happening, um, I was getting nice steady bites and the fish were in my peg, then there's no reason you can't keep putting a ball in every cast, catching a fish. Yeah, so you put them in ball form because of the depth you've got. Anything more than two foot, you need to feed them in a ball um, to get them to go down. My next step would be, so whether I'll have to do it or not, I don't know, it'd be to attract fish. So if I'd be sat there, if I'd fed my bait, I'd had two or three casts, uh, where I'd fed two or three little balls just to make sure I was accurate um, and no response had happened, then I've got to change things. Do you know what I mean? What the, the next step would be to have bait falling through the water and that's your, your attraction properties. What you could do, you could swap to fish in a catapult with the right bait, but definitely at this time of year where accuracy is massively, massively important, by swapping to a catty, all I'm going to do is increase my feed area. I mean, it's impossible for me to replicate the accuracy of a cup with a catapult. You know what I mean, regardless, it's impossible. I'm, a cup's going to put my bait in a, a 10 inch square maximum, whereas a catty is two foot. I mean, on a good day, if I've got my eye in, if I'm on go over, who knows how far that bait's going to get spread. But it keeps things nice and accurate. So, what I want to swap to in that situation, I'm just going to swap my pot so it's nice and quick, is a pot with a completely different lid. Yeah, or I could just swap lids, but it's just nice and fast to swap a pot over there. I want a sprinkle lid does for me. It allows me to attract fish into my bag. So by putting bait into a sprinkle lid, if I just push him down, put me, me bait in exactly the same way, very similar to the amount that I was feeding in a ball form. What that a sprinkle lid allows me to do is to keep bait in my pot, sort of for the or a good proportion of the cast. You know what I mean? Maybe the full cast, depending on how quickly a bite comes. Just And I can literally just keep turning it over and releasing several pellets in every go. So there's probably, what, 50 pellets in there. I could probably get 10 turns out of that when I'm dropping five or six pellets out each go. So it makes it really, really attractive to fish when needed to keep on turning that pot, tipping it over, getting some bait falling through the water, and then that's going to attract fish into your peg. What you definitely do have to be careful of, though, is keeping them fish up in the upper layers by doing it too much. Yeah, feeding with a, a sprinkle lid at the wrong time when there's plenty of fish already present in your peg is only ever going to lead fish off the bottom. So it works great. It's very similar to me throwing on my catapult properties uh, of attraction, which I use. I, I use throwing my bait, catapulting my bait, or my sprinkle lid just to attract fish into my peg. Yeah, because it's great that bait falling through the water, uh, a little bit of noise, maybe if we go to a different bait, if we go to hard pellets or, or who knows what, a bit more of a substantial bait. Uh, it can make a bit of noise to attract them as well, but it's so accurate in that bait going through the water. But it is only ever for that. It's for attraction. I'd say, no, it's not only ever for that. It's possibly in there when it's rock bottom as well in the winter. It's often handy to have uh, your sprinkle lids to feed maggots. That can be a great way of just constantly having one or two maggots going through. When you know, you're sort of like trying to spare the fish into giving you a bite, that can be a different uh, application for using a sprinkler as well but in most cases say it's just for your your attraction of bringing fish into the peg and making them a lot easier to catch so i'm going to knock my sprinkle lid off because by the look of it i don't need that one at the minute and i'm going to go straight back to as we were making a bit more of a smaller ball lovely i'll get some bait on and i'm going to try and catch some skimmers and just see how the peg goes Right, so I've been fishing for a little bit, I've probably fished for half an hour. 
and it's been good. Do you know what I mean? It's been really nice. I've been catching plenty of fish, uh, lots of small skimmers. What I'm worried about is the pegs definitely quieting down on the bites I'm getting, and also I want to pull some different fish into my bay. I mean, because I'm just putting this little ball in every go, the small skimmers are just nailing the straight on it and they're wiping me peg out really, really quickly and it's not letting anything else sort of happen, not letting any other fish settle in me swim. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of me, me first lid, me normal round lid, and I'll put my sprinkle lid on. Now it takes two seconds, whiz me lid off, and all I'm going to feed, I'm going to put almost double the amount I was feeding in. I'm going to give them a bit of bait, just try and make something happen. So I'm just going to put two, two lots of sort of 15 micros in. I mean, it gives me plenty of bait in that cup to make something happen. And so we've got bait on already, we're good to go. So what I want to do now is draw more fish from further around, both to spare the peg off again because it's, it's faded a little bit, but also in the hope of attracting a few more big lads. Or oh, a few big lads, I ain't had one yet, and there's plenty of fish about. There's quite a bit of bubbling going on, and there's a few carp about. So it'll be very nice to catch something different. It's a big crucian, a fancy big crucian. There's lots of them in here. So I'm just going to put my rig in, and what I want to do, I don't want to sprinkle any bait until my rig's stationary in the peg. I mean, I've got a nice positive rig on there. I've got a 414s in about, I'm going to say five and a half foot, but I've not paid a lot of attention, if I'm honest. It's about five and a half foot. So once my float's in, then I just want to turn my pot and just put some bait in. Yeah, so just that quick turn and turn it back, it's put, who knows what, it's put between five and ten pellets in, I imagine. Little tiny sprinkle. And I've got that bait going all the way through, but I want to feed it over the top of my stationary rig. So I've got a nice positive rig on with lots of shot down the bottom end. So what it'll actually do, even if I don't get bites, if fish start intercepting that bait um, as it's sinking, it's sinking right around my rig because I fed right on top of my bait, I'm going to see indications on my float. So it lets me know very quickly whether there's uh, a percentage of fish up in the water eating my bait or whether there's nothing there. Do you know what I mean? It lets you understand the reaction that your feeding's having rather than if I was to put my bait in as soon as I went in, then lay my rig in, I wouldn't know what was going on because my rig would never be... Um, falling in conjunction with my bait, it'd be separate to it until it, it all reached the bottom. So that one I'm just going to continually keep doing. I didn't have an indication then. And same again, just turn my pot, another little sprinkle. So I'll do that several times. I mean, that lid on the end of my pot, and depending on the size of pot I've got it on as well, allows me to feed a tiny amount of pellets several times. I mean, I can keep on feeding, I might get six, seven, eight feeds out of that 30 or 40 pellets, which allows me, do you know what I mean? It's a real accurate form of uh, attraction sort of thing that I can't, I can't create with any other way. There's no other way of me putting bait in that accurate without using a sprinkle pot. So it's definitely something that's not used enough. It's something I don't see a lot of in my, in my coaching. And people just don't use them. I'd say that they're so valuable when the fishing's a bit tricky. So still nothing's happened. I've had three, three, oh, I've had a little tiny indication then. Just moved a little bit then. That was quite quickly after I'd fed that. That was probably five or six seconds after I'd fed, which could mean that there's fish really high up in the water. If I, if I get a continuous uh, reaction every time I feed, you know what I mean, of the same, if I feed, I get a, a bit of a line at every five or 10 seconds. It, it's a nice sign that says that, yeah, I've brought fish into my peg, but it could mean that I've kept them up in the water or they want to be in the, up in the water because of the conditions, the rain, whatever, and they don't want to go down today. It's something that could lead me to understand how my veg's behaving, that if I were to just feed my pellets in ball form that go straight to the bottom, I'd never ever know about any fish that wants to be through the water on the day, or fish that simply didn't want to be on the bottom because, say, it's just too cold or, or whatever else. At this time of year, it's definitely something that's, that's going to happen or not. So I'll say I fed that. I think this is the last one. That's the end of my part. I think I got six out of that. I wasn't counting. I think I got six feeds out of 30 pellets then. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely, or oh, a bit more, probably 40 pellets. So Meg, it's a lot of attraction. And also as well, another point worth mentioning is that I never ever try and feed um, two lots of bait within one fall, if that makes sense. So I, I want, um, those pellets are gonna sink at what, five seconds a foot. I've got five and a half, uh, what have I got? Yeah, I'm gonna have five and a half foot out there. So I've nearly got 30 seconds worth of fall. So it's pointless feeding two lots of bait within 30 seconds of each other, because I'm not gonna understand which baits causing the reaction if one does. So it's a case of feeding your bait, depending on your depth, giving it that amount of time. So have a look at your bait as well. It's definitely worth getting a little bit of bait, chuck it in the edge, and just having a look at how fast it does sink. I mean, you can learn so much just watching a, a pellet, a maggot, whatever, just seeing how slow it sinks. You'd be amazed at how slow some baits do sink and working out how long that bait's taking to, taking to get to the bottom. I had a bite on that and I've run out of bait. 
So I'm going to catch nothing on that because my pellets come off. But immediately I'm going to go in again. I'm going to do it again. Do you know what I mean? I'll do it several times and I'll probably do it for two or three casts in a row when I'm sprinkling a bit of bait in just to cause some attraction and to bring some fish into my peg. So cause I've probably gone fishing itself, putting the pots in, uh, putting the um, piles in and sprinkling. And I've now gone what? I've now gone five minutes without a bite. So there's definitely something's happened in my peg. There's no fizzing anymore. There's nothing going on. Everything's quietened down. But hopefully, by attracting some fish, by making that bait fall through the water nice and slow and giving a nice column to... I mean, a bit more visual, isn't it? If, if the bait's going through the water, they can see what's going on. Whereas if it's just a very subtle pile on the bottom, which the, the balls I've been putting in, they're, they're tiny. I mean, they're probably spread into to two, three inch on the bottom, so they're not spreading a, a lot at all. And it's very easy for a fish swimming at two or three foot above that to miss it. So I'm going to straighten again. And again, let me rig settle. Hold that up a little minute. Yeah, let me rig settle and then straight away get my bait over the top of it, just a little bit. So I've probably fed double the amount there. I've held it down for a little bit longer. There was a bubble in my peg then as well. Little indication then. So it's amazing how quick it happens. Do you know what I mean? You don't want to do it too much. Ooh. You don't want to do it too often. I mean, sprinkling too often is only ever going to lead to fish all over the place. Which I mean, do it once, maybe twice with a cup. See what reaction happens and then maybe go back to potting straight away or going back to a, a lump straight away and keeping the fish in your peg or concentrating them on the bottom. So it's exactly the same as whether you were to throw or catty. The last thing I'd want to do if I was fishing on bottom out there is cat. Yeah, we got one little skimmer in my peg. So the beauty of these as well, I don't know if Craig picks up on it at the camera, is because of the lids, that pot's still got a good few pellets in it. But as long as I'm nice and I concentrate keeping my, pe uh, my um, pot vertical, nothing spills. Yeah, nothing until I get here and then all the bait can come out. Because the last thing I want is to use a lid that sort of as soon as I start wobbling, my bait can fall out of easy. Let me just swing this one in before we do anything. A proper one that's been attracted really quick by that bait falling through the water. But yeah, I, I don't want to end up with a pot full of bait because I get a bite too quick and end up shipping all the way back and spilling bait all over my peg. Yeah, you might not think it makes a difference, but it really does. Do you know what I mean? The last thing I want is other bait in my peg that I'm not fishing over. What's the point of doing that? All I'm going to do is spread my fish. So, so if I have a, a decent lid that's going to retain my pellets when required, but also releases them beautifully when needed, so it's the best thing we've ever come up with. Sean's, like, I can't take credit for that one. That's definitely Sean that's come up with the sprinkling baby on these pots. But for me, it, it's transformed my fishing very much so my winter fishing, where accuracy is going to be a big thing and I can't get my catty out. So these little things, they allow you to bring fish into your peg when with a lot of pots, you're very much restricted to one form of presentation, one form of feeding, because you can't have that nice little trickle going in because you, your pot simply doesn't allow you to have it. But I'm going to carry on doing this. I'm going to revert back to, to cupping it in now into little balls. I'm going to catch a few more. And then I've got one last application to, to show you that was mainly the key point for me. And that's feeding with these, these pots down the edge because for me, it's been the biggest edge in my fishing this year. Right, so to be honest, the good bit of fishing is done. But what I really want to do is show you that the main application for the pots for me, unfortunately, it's definitely gone now because I can actually see the bottom down the edge. But for me, it was fishing down the edge. You know what I mean? Creating a tighter bile. It, it's definitely not something I can lay credit to. It's definitely the thinking of a lot of the Lindholm lads, um, Adam Richards and then the Partridge lads as well, Mr. Bennett, that they've definitely come up with a, a complete different concept of fishing down the edge and keeping things very, very tight. I mean, which I've talked about again on plenty of videos, not creating a, a great big pile down the, down the margin or a too big a pile of spreads because you don't get a bite. You do, but it's a lot harder to get a bite. So instead, by using the correct sort of pot, by having a pot that allows your, your bait, whether that be worms, micros, uh, ground bait, all, all stodgy baits that you mix up in a, not a slop, but a, a wet consistency that you can get to hold into the bottom. By having the, the right sort of pot, which in this case, it's the main thing is having the, the holes in the bottom, the vents in the bottom that completely uh, alleviate the vacuum effect sort of thing. So it doesn't let any bait stick in your cup. So definitely it was, a, I remember Adam Richards doing it at Lindome, drilling, the woodlands it was, drilling big holes in the bottom of this pot. That's definitely where it's originated from me that I remember it. But what it allows me to do, down the edge, so in this case we're going to pull a little cup in there, is to feed me bait in the edge, put a little bit of a, a pile of micros in the edge. But because of the, the vacuum effect, say because the hole, uh, holes in the bottom alleviate that, that allows a bit of airflow when it needs to, 
I can put that against the water and it makes my pellets come out lovely. Yeah, just as they have done there, they come out in a lovely sort of pellet of pellets. Yeah, so they land on the bottom so much tighter than ever you want before and allows the, the window for me to catch a fish to be so much smaller, the, the, the accuracy window. Yeah, oh, window's not right, what am I call it? Footprint. Let's call it a footprint. I've called it that plenty of times before. On the bottom is so much smaller than if you um, put it in with a, a normal cup, you put it in loose, things like that. What it just allows, I'm going to whiz these in now just so you can see what I'm on about, is for me to put my bait in a lovely, lovely tight pile just by putting it in, turning my pot, and they go down in a beautiful way, but very, very, very accurate on the bottom. Which for me, for my edge fishing, without doubt, it, it's been the biggest thing. It leads to more bites down the edge, just because your bait's so much more located. I mean, it's not spread all over the place. There's a little pile of fish home straight in on it, and you get a bite rather than having 10 tails down the edge. Your peg looks brilliant, but because your bait's spread all over the place, you just don't get a bite. So definitely the, the biggest application for me have been these little pots fishing down the edge or to an island as well it's been a big thing on snake lakes not that i've done a lot of that this year but fishing to the far bank of snake lakes putting that little pile in so it's so much better than the, the old days of putting big pots in spreading fish all over the place and, and making it difficult to catch and saying uh, these pots have done exactly that for me and say so without doubt they won me a lot of money this year being able to keep things and make the most of it when the fish come down the edge that's definitely worth touching on is that when you get a visit down the edge if you're feeding in this sort of way at Larford's the, the key venue that I've got to bring up, it, it's where it works best, is when you only get a small number of fish visiting. I mean, you get one or two at a time, you may get, on a good day, 10 in an hour. If you can feed in a way that you get bites off those 10 fish, if you get 10 bites in that last hour off every single fish that visits, it's who knows, it could be a hundred pound, couldn't it, if, if the fish are big enough. But you get a bite off every fish that visits. Whereas if you're big potting all the time and you're spreading your bait over a great big area, it's really easy for them fish to visit your peg have a little bit of bait, never touch your hook bait or you get a liner or something happens, you don't get a clean bite and you miss the opportunity because it, it, they only feed for a short pile, a short time then they leave your peg. So fishing in this way with these pots, it keeps everything right where you want it, you get a bite and you, you really do make the most of your edges. So it's better than I've ever done things before. Yeah. Right, just really quickly, the last thing that to be honest I forgot to touch it all together was something that, I, again, I can't take credit for this, this is Sean, just to increase um, the pot's versatility that he's created and he's employed into all three different sizes of pot that he's made for us is he's made a little extension for every pot which i'd never even be close to coming up with something as ingenious that but what it actually gives me as well with my pots more so for down the edge i don't tend to i must be honest i don't use it a lot for the smaller pots when i'm fishing out but definitely down the edge in, in years gone by i used to have lots of have lots of different sizes of pot depending on the size pile i want to create down the edge now instead i can just put my little sort of collar thing and that just clips straight onto the pot and I get probably a third again of my pot so I can increase my feed without having to put a great big daft pot on. I can quickly put an extension on. We just had a play, we could actually put three or four of these extensions on. Although to be honest, it, it makes the pot a little bit wobbly, it's not right. But yeah, it, it allows me to increase the size of my pile really, really, really quickly just by adding a quick extender onto my pot. It can be great for sort of attracting different fish into my peg. It's something I teach a lot when I'm coaching is that by feeding with a small pot to begin with, catching, I mean, whatever's coming into your pegs, generally F1s to begin with, a lot of venues I teach at. And then as soon as you start seeing things change, you start seeing our carp present, just increasing the size of your pot. I mean, whether it's swapping up to a much bigger pot if you're starting on a tiny one, or say in these cases, just putting an extension on, you'd be amazed how much you can change your peg. I mean, that little bit of an increase in bait just spares them bigger fish on. I say it can completely transform your peg in the later stages when them big lads have at you. That's something well worth a go, again, something that's made a big difference to my fishing. Have a little play with them.